your headset is connected. Glad to hear it. So, yeah, it's all bright and sunny out, and you probably can't see me because of all the brightness behind me, but oh well. Um, we're just going to glue up some stuff. A little glue, a little goo, a board. It's a whole bunch of stuff. There is some cedar, some uh, mahogany, some pine, uh, some more cedar, some more mahogany, some more pine, some more mahogany, some more cedar, some more pine, some more mahogany, some more pine, and then I think this is mahogany too. It's just a scrap. So I'm going to glue it up. What's up, Viking? Long time no talk, Viking. <laughs> we were just chatting on uh, Facebook just half an hour ago or so. Anyway, so we're going to glue, but I think I'm going to need more glue. I think I'm going to get my little glue bot. I have a little baby glue bot. Because, actually, you know what? This is a big glue up. Oh, crap. And I'm short. But the good thing is, is I got this working again. Wow. And it rolls away way too easily. Ooh, that kind of hurts my leg. All right. Sitting sideways, so it don't hurt my leg. I have more glue here somewhere. I have a big old gallon jug of it. So I won't run out. I was just hoping... Before I refilled this, I could uh, clean it. It's getting kind of yucky. But if you do woodworking and you don't have a glue bot, I highly recommend getting a glue bot. They really are awesome. I used to just use like I actually have a case of them, like ketchup jugs. You know, you can get the little pint and quart ketchup dispensers that are just a can. Like, do I have one right here? I do. This has actually got mineral oil in it, but you know, the basic. I used to use these. This is way better. It's hard to describe, it just makes it more convenient to uh, dispense glue. My Everything has fallen off the shelf over here. I need to redo that shelf. I don't like that shelf. And I'm going to need more clamps, but let's get gluey. Let's just get gluey. I didn't even retweet out or post on Facebook or anything. I just fired up the stream. I was jamming the tunes, but I've been jamming the tunes all morning, trying to model, which I wish I could show that here. Wouldn't it be cool if you could show stuff like that, Viking? I, I sent a video to Viking. I was modeling, listening to music, and every once in a while I get distracted, and uh, I start dancing the figure with the mouse to the music. I do it often. <laughs> and I took a video of it and sent it to Viking because we were chit-chatting about other stuff. Oh, we were chit-chatting about filament because Viking won some filament on Chris Prillo's stream. And of course, it's printed solid. And printed solid doesn't shit to Viking land. Um, I know the country, and one, for some reason, my brain isn't associated in the country. But anyways, to Viking land. Um, the country in which Viking lives. So, uh, Netherlands. There you go. See, you didn't even have to type it out. I don't know if I can read that. It's the, the laptop's way over there because there's stuff in the way and it's the closest place I could put it. So I'm not sure I can read chat, but anyway, I could sort of see it. I think that's Andrew that just showed up. Hi, Andrew. If it's not whoever you are, hi. Yeah, that's Andrew that I can read. It's funny, I can read a distance easier and I can read up close because it's a good 10 feet away. And you can all see my bright and sunny sunshine through the door because it is like perfect out. 
right now. And when I say perfect out, I mean this is my kind of weather we're having right now because it's not hot and it's not cold. It's like just maybe 70 degrees. It was raining and miserable this morning. Now it's like freaking awesome. So I opened up the garage door to let the air in. And this chair is hurting my leg. I might have to stand up again. This is kind of a big glue up. I hope it doesn't start drying before I can get it all gooed up. Because I'm kind of taking my own sweet time. I'm really not rushing. This is all just scrap wood. They're all like twigs. None of them are exactly the same size. They're all close to about, I don't know, an inch and a half. And uh, I just cleaned up the edges. They're all about the same thickness, which again is an inch and a half. Um, I'm pretty sure these, because uh, I didn't touch these um, mahogany ones, I'm pretty sure these are from the deck. They were deck spindles for the handrail that I tore out and cut off the ends and cleaned them up. And everything else is about the same thickness. It's all going to have to get planed down. And it's going to be too big. I thought about that after I started doing this. Um, it's going to be wider. It's going to be like 14 and a half inches. And my plane is only... Um, my plane is only 12, 13 and a half, and it's going to be like 14 and a half inches. But I have a brand new surfacing head that I got and have not used for the CNC that I'm dying to try. So I got to stand up. Um, so I got to start going a little faster too. Otherwise, this might go dry up on me and not work. Yeah, so I'm going to be able to, uh, hopefully, level it all up after it's all glued up on the CNC. And I'm going to need more glue because it's farting. It's doing the glue farts when you squeeze the bottle. Kind of needs a bath. Maybe I will use the little one because I think I have enough for the little one in the little one. They both need a bath. <clears throat> now, let's use this one up first. <sighs> Come on now. I know there's more in there. I know you got more in you. And, uh, you know, brush it out with the... This is actually a barbecue brush. A silicone barbecue brush. I absolutely love these for spreading glue because you don't have to wash them. <laughs> and I'm serious, I don't wash them. I find it it's actually easier. I mean, I wipe some of the excess off, but when it comes time to clean it, I just like hang it and let it dry overnight. And uh, where the the hairs, fingers, whatever on the brush are so long all you do is pull on them and all the glue releases from them and it just pops off in a big glob of dried glue sometimes it's a little more work than that but most often it is not i have no idea what i'm going to make with all these boards actually i have a thought but i'm not going to say it yet because i'm not sure um but i have them all and they were all in the way and to be honest um, yesterday I was working out here on the, on the table saw that the laptop is sitting on that you guys are viewing me from. I knocked them all over and they were all kind of stacked on a shelf. And you know what? They're all about the same thickness. I'm going to cut them to the same thickness. And they pretty much are. They were all pretty much close. And I'm just going to glue them together to make a board. <laughs> and then decide later what I'm going to do with it. Which is exactly what I'm doing. Right here. I'm just going to go and get This is the only one I didn't cut down, but it's all right. It'll be all right. I promise it'll be all right. I'm getting off my little wax paper here. 
We want to keep it on the wax paper so the glue doesn't get all over the place and glue itself to my fancy new oak table. Fancy new old oak table. Very old oak. And it's all the scrappity scraps. But it's um, a new table to me. How's that sound? This one's tapered. <laughs> this board's got a taper to it. It's like uh, way thicker here than it is there. It's like more than three quarters of an inch on this end and less than a half inch on that end. But I don't care. It is the last one, so it really doesn't matter all that much because it'll probably get cut off a good portion of it anyways. So it won't really matter. And I didn't really need to glue it because there was already glue on the board before it. Oh, well. Sometimes I do dumbass things all the time. Can you say all the time? All right, now I got to get them up on to the uh, clamps. Hoping I can do a few at a time. I should have actually just started by putting them on the clamps, huh? Oh, well. That would have been the smart thing to do. But I'm not smart. I'm just a doer. They never say I'm smart. I just do. I do what I do because I can do what I do. Oh, I'm all gooey. Ooey, gooey, rich, and chewy. I was hoping I had something. I do. I know I do. That I can just stick underneath. Lift up. Get the wax paper to stay down. I think I got it trapped under there. And uh, put this one under it. And there we go. Hey now, that's gonna go this way. Big old bar clamps. Let me go visualize. Who do we got here? We got 3D Jeff. We have, let's see, Viking, Andrew. What else am I missing? The Soto level? Is that what it is? I can't read it. That's all I can see on my little uh, screen there. There might be more people here. But whoever you are, welcome. Welcome to the Crazy Ass Llama Show. Because <laughs> I'm crazy. I have a like and dislike of these clamps all at once. They're big and heavy and obnoxious, but man, they work good. All right, I want to level these ends up some. Might have to whack them now that I started clamping. Sort of get the level ends leveled up. They don't have to be perfect, but. Yeah, the glue's already taking hold. Yeah, that's enough, I guess. Oh, yeah, baby. Nice and tight. Now, let's get a couple more clamps and uh, do the rest of it. Come here, clamps. I have clamps. I want to say I have enough clamps, but I don't, which is why I'm actually using these because uh, my other clamps are already clamping up other stuff. These I like, but they're just so freaking big and heavy. But they do work really, really good. They work much better than the regular cheapo F clamps. Much, much better. But they are freaking heavy and obnoxious. But they work. 
And there we go. We have one big ass board out of a bunch of little boards. Oh, that weighs a ton. And there you go. It's going to be pretty, huh? Look at that. Look at the color striping. I think that's going to be awesome. This was a good choice. I'm thinking I'm going to like this. What do you think? I think I'm going to like this. I think I'm going to like it a lot. Let's give it a swipe with a rag. Oh, wait. I might not have any rags. <laughs> oh, well. All I have is the blue rags. And I don't know if I... Did I tweet her that? <laughs> Twitter that? Um, I have some blue rags that I bought off my Amazon or something. You know, cheap. There's one. Cheap chop rags. They're great. These things. What I've discovered, though, is the blue dye bleeds. <laughs> and I did my brother's cutting board in maples and oaks and all that good stuff. And uh, I always do the rubbing alcohol treatment to raise the grain and clean everything and blah, blah, blah. Cutting board was almost done. And the blue dye soaked into the maple. <laughs> And I was not happy. So I hit myself in the head or anything here. And I literally had to take off like a half inch of material from the top and the bottom to get the blue that soaked into the maple out. So since then I have taken them. And I put them in the wash. I just took the whole box. I bought a box of like 150 or something off of Amazon. Whatever it was, 100, 150. I think it was 150. And uh, I took them all and put them through the wash with some bleach. So, of course, with other clothes. So I have some other clothes that turn blue. Because <laughs> the blue bled. But, uh, which I didn't care. They're just like work t-shirts and stuff. Some underwear. I got some blue tinted underwear now. It's like a steel blue it bleeds to. Uh, anyway, uh, so they're not as bad, but that's going right in the garbage. I don't trust it, even after washing. So there's that board. Let's get it out of here and over here where it'll dry. Overnight drying. My oldest brother keeps going, oh, we could save that and use it for something. I'm like, yeah, I'm going to use it for something. Whatever freaking comes to mind next. <laughs> I have to fill this goo box. I got goo all over my hands. And you know what works really good to get it off? These are one of those sandpaper erasers. You just rub your hand on it just like you would sandpaper. And it takes 90% of it right off. No washing involved. Just takes it, peels it right off of your skin. Doesn't hurt. Don't need water. It's not perfect, but it gets rid of most of it. People didn't know that, huh? Works really well. 90% of it's off. Do the other hand. You just rub your hand over it. I don't know if you can hear it in the mic dropping on the freaking wax paper. What's up, Red Light? Red Light's the only one on YouTube. Everyone else is on Twitch. We're all on Twitch, Red Light. I've been broadcasting on YouTube at the same time. because There's still some holdouts for YouTube and understandable. If in all reality, if I could hit that thousand mark on YouTube, so I could get like ten bucks a month streaming to pay for streaming, that's really all I care about. Uh, like out to make money on it, I just want it to pay for itself, basically. Um, I would just stick to YouTube because I still find Twitch kind of well twitchy. <laughs> it's just very twitchy.
But it is what it is. I don't really care either way. I do prefer watching streams on YouTube, to be honest with you. Like if I'm watching someone else stream, I'll usually go to Twitch because I know they get paid on Twitch and they're not on YouTube. But... It works pretty well. It's not perfect, but considering I don't have any uh, water out here, actually I have a jug of water out here, but not for cleaning me. Let's clean the glue bot. It needs a bath. Because it's all crusty. Come on, let go. And the little thingy that I love these little covers, and they have the little string that goes between them. They're like super soft silicone. They don't make that string strong enough to, it just tears after a while. Which is no freaking good. Let's give the glue bot a little cleaning. I don't have any freaking paper towels out here anymore went through them all so i have some more semi-clean no not clean rags that i don't win a waste on rags on glue no of course not oh no i'm dripping glue on my nice table well, that's not good well new rags <laughs> new blue rag if i want it off my damn table just, just finished this table. Put a nice coat of polyurethane on it. A couple of three coats. And uh, stay clean for now. Not that it will for very long, but for now, I would like it to stay clean. And let's clean out the glue bot. It's got dried up goops in the nozzle. And it just pushes out in a big chunk. <laughs> Isn't that cool? I think that's cool. That the glue does not glue to certain things. Like plastic. So we can put the glue bot nozzle back. Put the little seal in. That seals it. So when you squeeze the bottle, it actually comes out the nozzle instead of the side is a thing, which I really wish they'd make this seal like bigger. Kind of wish they'd make this, I call it a duck bill. I don't know if you can see it on the camera, but it's like a little, you know, the nozzle. It's a wide format nozzle for the glue. Um, really wish they'd make it a little bit longer. You know, like it was another half an inch longer would be awesome. I might have to 3D print me one. What am I missing? Oh, the ring. Don't need the ring because it ripped off. And then let's clean the... Oh, if I can get it apart. You can fill out a little bit. Actually, it's pretty clean. It just had some spongy goopies in the threads. So let's fill her up again. I got goo right here. Some type bond number three, not affiliated. But if type bond gets a hold of me, they can certainly sponsor me. I wouldn't cry. <laughs> I mean, I'd, I'd more than appreciate a good type bond sponsor. That'd be awesome of them. Because that's pretty much all I use, type bond. If, you're, if you can hear me, type bond. <laughs> There's some goopies in the threads. Let's get the goopies out of the threads of the cat. So it threads on there easier. Seems like a pain in the butt, but these glue bots, when it comes time to do gluing, 
are freaking awesome. You know what? This thing's still half full, but I'm still going to clean the nozzle because this one's having issues too. I might be able to just do it from here. Way better than your ketchup bottles. Way, way better. Don't know how to describe it other than it just makes application of glue easier. Mostly because, well, again, you can't see it, but it's it's not just like a round hole. It's a flat, round thing. <laughs> I don't know how to describe it. It's a flat, round thing. It's not a round thing. It's a flat, round thing. You know, makes it dispense easier onto wide boards and stuff. But they do take a little maintenance, which any glue bottle does if you're going to use it, unless you just buy quartz and use it right out of the quart. And then when you're done, you throw it away, which is wasteful and expensive. Because it's literally like, it's about half the price to buy a gallon than it is just a quart. I mean, per quart. I think a quart's like 17 or 18 bucks, and a gallon's only 23. <laughs> this is 23 bucks, which is a lot for freaking glue. But a quart, I'm pretty sure a quart of type on three is like, it's in the teens. I can't remember exactly how much it is. It's cheap off. And the baby bot. I love the baby bot. I got the baby bot by accident. I was actually looking for one of these. It was on sale for, uh, I don't know, like four bucks or three bucks. And I thought it was one of these because you know how when you look on the pictures on Amazon, I got it off of Amazon, you know, the size scale, you can't tell. And it just looked like one. And I didn't really read it for the, uh, you know, information that it was just a little like four ounce instead of a 16 ounce. <laughs> so I was like, cool, four bucks. I can get an extra one. And uh, it was a four ounce for four bucks. And you know what? I love this thing. <laughs> I use this more than I use this, to be honest, because it's generally easier to handle and smaller and easier and just easier. And it's tiny and it's cute. And I love it. And I use them both. I actually bought another one when I found out it was this small and I used it. The first I got it, I was like, oh, crap. And then I started using them. I'm like, this thing's freaking awesome this size. This is a better size. They make one more, too. They make a uh, tall bot, which is like 8 ounces instead of 4 or 16. And it's just it's just like this. It's just double height. And actually, I think it's only 7 ounces, but it's just taller. My only problem with that is I think it'll tip over, and I already got these two. But I do think that the 7 ounce I would probably like even more than this because this does run out too easy. It does, it does. So... Again, I'm not going to actually clean the brush, but I do hit it with some rubbing alcohol and just wipe it off so it's not dripping glue all over the place. And yes, I use rubbing alcohol because it actually thins it better than water and it sets it faster because at this point, I want to get rid of what I can. But the rest of it, I just want it to set. So when it dries, you literally just take these little hairs, they're all stringy, and you stretch it out. I mean, you can stretch it like almost half again its length. And the glue just pops right off of it. It's like amazingly awesome how it works. So there's that. Let's clean off my uh, nail set so it's not all covered in glue. It's actually a punch. This is not a nail set. That's an actual punch. And we will put everything away. 
I'm actually kind of sweating. Put the tape measure away. Put the hammer away. The rubber mallet key thing. And rub my fingers on the stick some more because I got more glue on me. Do, 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 do. Glue comes off. It's just a rubbing. It's not perfect, but when you're out in a shop like this and you don't have running water, it works just fine. It gets 90% of it off. Yeah, more like 80%. I mean, there's still a lot of my fingers, but it's not like an irritating coating of glue. <laughs> that makes sense and you can get it all off it just uh how much time you want to spend on it but this works awesome just rub it over your fingers and all the dried glue just peels off your skin now this only works with you know wood glues and if you tried it with like ca glue it'd probably just tear your skin off because the ca glue actually absorbs into your skin <laughs> but Good enough. And now I got a mess on the wax paper. And this is why I like the wax paper. Because now I can just do this. And it's all gone. Here's my garbage can. Over here. And I do have some glue on my table. But not much. And it's a fresh coat of polyurethane. So the glue just rubs right off just like it does off my fingers. I wonder if the eraser works. Hey, it does. Although it kind of fucks with the uh, finish of the uh, polyurethane, but it's just a dent. It ain't perfect. It is oak. This is solid freaking oak. <laughs> well, the two ends are maple because oak has a tendency to uh, catch clothes and fray and get little slivers. So I had some scrap maple from a uh, full of wormholes and stuff, but the maple is a lot easier to smooth down and get a smooth edge. So both ends are maple, but the solid part of it's all oak. It's all junk oak. It's got rat holes and bug holes and holes and more holes and not holes. and Which you can't see. I just chose the good side of each board and ripped it down and... Glued them all together. Three sections. This one, this one, this one. Three sections. And then glued those together. And then I went to put them on the CNC and they don't quite fit. Because <laughs> it's longer than my CNC and I was going to cut it down. And I said, screw it. And I just took it outside and I took my electric hand plane. And I got rid of most of the high spots. And then I took the belt sander to it for 10 minutes. And that's it. It's not perfectly flat. It's not perfectly level. Don't care. <laughs> It's just a work surface. So there's that. All done gluing and screwing. I glued some boards yesterday, which is originally what I came out here to do. Was unscrew them. Unclamp them. But hardwoods, when it's this thick, you know, you're gluing this much surface together doesn't always dry fast and i've got a wet spot right here and some of these do too now granted this is a big drip but if this big drip's not dry it may not be dry halfway in the middle of this board yet i'm just guessing but it may not be so i'm not going to take it apart yet but what i will do i'm in no rush for it anyways i mean i kind of am but i'm not um, I will just take a knife and well, maybe I won't I'll say scrape this off, but I guess this knife is duller than I thought it was. And it is. This is a uh, handyman club of America knife. My father used to get the handyman magazine back in the day. Any of you old enough to remember handyman magazine? It was kind of like um, popular science and uh, handyman. Those were the two we always got here. <laughs> Back in the day of magazines. I just got glue all over me again. Dried up glue. How did I get dried up glue on me? 
whatever. Yeah, so I'm going to give this a couple more hours, days. I'll probably wait until tomorrow. Take it apart in the morning. Because these, I have one maple, I have one walnut, and I have one cherry. Um, it's actually cheaper. I can buy this pre-finished in three-quarter inch widths. So I've been buying a, what they call eight-quarter which is true two inch, but it's all rough cut right from the mill, mill cut, barn cut. Some people call it barn cut. Some people call it mill cut. It's mill cut. It's just off the mill. Never been plain. I get these shipped, planed at three quarter inch. Now it's always more expensive to get eight quarter, but not that much more. So it's usually worth it because all the work you got to do to glue it together. But these are so much cheaper and they're plain and they're finished. I literally could just take them out and glue them together. I still let them acclimate for two weeks to my shop before I start gluing. But I just glue them together. They're all pre-finished. This is the finish it came in. It's all smooth and four sides finished. S4S. If you don't know what that means, it's four sides finished. Four sides surfaced is actually what it means. Um, and they're near perfect. A couple of them I had to run a bit through the planer or the, actually I just ran it through the joiner to smooth up the edge. Um, but I got cherry um, oak or cherry maple walnut. I got actually more lengths and spent almost $50 less with it all finished <laughs> to get the same um, board foot. Now, if you don't know what a board foot, it isn't a linear foot. It's a board foot. It needs to be an inch thick by whatever wide by a foot. So it's usually an inch thick by a foot by a foot. So if you get a one by six, it's two foot long is one board foot. If it's a true one by six, not three quarters. These are true one by, not three quarter finish. They're true one by. They're actually not. They say right on they're close to one, but a lot of them will be more like seven eighths. But they're darn close. I mean, they're thick. They're thicker than your, your one buy you buy at your local store. And they ship it for free. <laughs> so me and my brother were like, ah, you know, I'm not sure, but we tried it. And uh, I'm very happy with them. And they come in 24-inch lengths, which is perfect to make cutting boards out of, which I have a couple of cutting board orders for, which is what I bought them for. And uh, I clamped them together yesterday to make them wider. Because that's about how thick my cutting boards are. They're actually about an inch and a quarter by the time I, you know, strip it down and glue it all back together. It'll be about a quarter inch thinner than this. But that's that's how big my cutting boards are. They're big and heavy and gnarly. Um, real thick, which is why people like them in the random. So then I take this and I rip it into strips and I make a random pattern. and Boom. Done. Fancy ass cutting board that people seem to be liking so i got a couple orders for those and i got a clock and i got a cribbage board and i got a dartboard i gotta make which the dartboard case i'm gonna probably use the oak for i haven't exactly decided i have a buttload of mahogany i forgot about but it's all real thick it's like two and a quarter inches thick that my brother used for uh, when we tore all his stuff out of his house just before he moved. It was a, uh, he bought it to make a bench. He never used it. It's a brand new freaking board. It's like 10 inches wide. It's like two and a quarter thick, about 10 feet long. And it just sat in his garage. It's got some issues on the edges because the bugs got out a little bit and it sat for probably 20 years in his garage and never got used. So it's super duper dry. It probably absorbed moisture from coming here. <laughs> Because it's super dry up in his, he had it in his attic of his freaking garage. So it was like always hot. Freaking humid, or not humid, but it was hot in there and dry. Covered in sawdust. I was getting ready to throw it out and he freaking literally swept it off. I had like an inch and a half of sawdust on it. He swept it off. He goes, you want this thing? And I looked at it. Frick yeah. <laughs> I like that more than I like the oak. That thing is sweet and it's straight. I can't believe it's not twisted or anything. Anyway, it's like redwood. 
it's not true mahogany. It's, I don't know, African something mahogany, but it's basically mahogany. It's a redwood. It's a real deep coffee colored redwood. It's really, really dark. Like really, really dark. Darker than most of the other mahoganies I have. It's like a reddish. Red, I mean, mahogany's generally got a reddish orange tone to it. But. Anyway, on that note, I think I'm going to kill it because I'm all glued up. I don't know what else I'm going to do. I glued these together. I could probably clean these up. These I glued together a long, long time ago. Same thing as I was gluing up earlier. They're just scraps. They said, hey, if I glue them together, I can uh, basically make bigger boards out of them. <laughs> Believe it or not, you can't even tell most of the way on this edge. I actually ran this one over the jointer already. It's hard to tell. That's actually two separate boards on that side. But there you go. You can see the seam now. But once you plane it, joint it, here you can tell because the colors are off a little bit. I don't know if the camera's picking it up. But down at this half, you can't really tell. The green even kind of matches, so you can't even tell that's good together. Which is sweet. Totally sweetness. This one you can because it's actually three pieces. I don't know if the camera will pick it up, but there's a like a three eighths, three eighths, and then a quarter inch piece in the middle. But you know what? It'll still make a great freaking cutting board. And I actually like it. I've had a few people say, oh, you don't want to do that. That's terrible. You know, you're going to see the seam. And then they see it. I did a couple for my brothers and my uh, nephews. My nephews actually bought, I gave them each one. And then they bought like three more because they wanted it for their in-laws for birthday slash Christmas presents, whatever. So they're like, yeah, we want more. Those are cool. Make more. And we like the seam in the middle, especially when it's, you know, random. When you look at the end grain, you see all the random seams. They're all random heights. They're not just in the middle. So, yeah, that worked out. So I'm doing more of it. And again, I just randomly, in fact, here's another one. I was running out of scrap, so I glued a maple and a walnut together. And it comes out the same thickness as these. So it can make a cutting board. So they're all the same thickness. That's like a quarter of a cutting board right there. Just in those three scraps. And I have more to glue together. But not right now. I mean, I got a big old chunk of purple heart here. Mm, I like purple heart. This stuff's weird. I don't know if you ever played with purple heart. And I just got a purple heart sliver in my hand. And it really hurts. Um, when you first cut it. Like, it'll look all purple. And then you rip it where the actual saw blade is. It's gray. It's not purple. Then you let it sit in the air for like a day or two. And it turns purple again. It's weird. It's kind of cool. But yeah, when you first cut Purple Heart right on the cut face, it's generally, I mean, it always has a kind of a purpley tint to it. But it's generally got more of a gray tone than purple. I got some other stuff. Oh crap, I should have glued this to that. <clears throat> Another piece of pine that I had sitting here. I could have glued to that board I glued together in the beginning with all the other softwoods. None of those are actually all softwoods, but close enough. That's going to look cool. I haven't decided what I'm going to do with that yet. That one I glued together in the beginning of this here show is, uh, I'm staring at all the colored stripes, you know, because it's mahogany and cedar and pines. And actually, I think one of those is poplar, which is basically just pine color wise. Pine's a little more orangey yellow, but the strips are going to look cool. Um, I'm trying to think. Um, oh, Dan, DB Dan's clock, I did that way. So I'll just random strips of cedars and pines and mahoganies and whatever else I had. And that came out freaking awesome. 
I absolutely love that one. It was, his was the best clock, I think, looks-wise, that I didn't add, like, resin or anything to. It just looked freaking awesome. It came out really good. His logo was, like, the perfect design for that, too. Anyway, I think I'm going to kill the stream because it's probably been close to an hour, hasn't it? 45 minutes. Yeah, see, I find freaking Twitch more, more, if you do all the, if you do all the drops and all that crap, which is fun, don't get me wrong, um, Twitch is more fun because you get, you know, the people are interacting and they're, you know, doing the little drop games and the Plinko games and all that stuff, but I'm not really into that that much. I do it on other people's streams because it's fun and it's fair and it's fun. But to set it all up on my little chintzy laptop, I can't do. It just won't do it. This thing is a 2009 I, uh, iBook from 2009. That's how old this is. So it can't handle it. Uh, my regular computer can, but I just I don't like running all that crap on top of other crap on top of other crap. And uh, I find when I'm watching Twitch streams, I get more spinny beach ball-y disconnects way more than I do on YouTube. It happens on an occasion on YouTube. It happens constantly on Twitch. I have yet to think of a stream that I didn't get a spinning beach ball every five minutes on Twitch. That's my biggest thing. And the, the Twitch is kind of, I don't know, it's getting better because there is us here. You know, there's a lot of makers, and I got to say thanks to Dan. DB Dan's the one that really started pushing it on all of us, and I'm glad he did, sort of, because it's not a bad thing. I, I like them both. They both have their pluses and minuses. I just, in general, I think I like YouTube better to watch. And FedEx is here with food, so I definitely got to go, because that's actually food from Walmart. <laughs> you know, it's like canned goods. You can order canned goods from Walmart and have it delivered by FedEx, if you didn't know. Anyway, I'm going to kill it. Have a good day.